I have kind of an intense video for you today. In fact, some of you are not going to like this video one bit. Some of you are going to react strongly against this video. But like I've been saying for a while now, it serves no one unless I'm 100% honest with my audience. It's not helping you, it's not helping me. And so I really have no choice but to be 100% honest about the messages and share the messages that I believe my audience needs to hear and not necessarily the messages that they want to hear. In today's video, I'm going to share an important message about retroactive jealousy that frankly, I think every retroactive jealousy sufferer needs to hear. My name is Zachary Stockhill, and since 2013, I've been helping men and women from all over the world overcome retroactive jealousy, overcome obsessive jealousy, and save their relationships. If you'd like to connect with me one-on-one, -on -one, or you'd like more information about my work, please visit my website at retroactivejealousy.com. All right, hello to those of you who are still watching after that uh, kind of intense intro. There was a comment recently in my private Facebook group. So I have a secret group on Facebook for students who are taking my online course, Get Over Your Partner's Past Fast. The group has been active since 2014 when I created it. We have, I think, over 500 members right now. It's a really supportive, beautiful little community. A lot of great people who've been there literally since 2014, retroactive jealousy survivors who just wanna reach out and help. If you're interested in joining us, you can find a link in the description of this video. But anyway, there was a comment posted there recently that really gave me pause. And I'm not gonna share all the details of the comment because it was private, uh, I assume. But the main thrust of the comment was from a retroactive jealousy survivor who recently lost their partner to an illness. And in this comment, this person was writing about the clarity in many ways that the loss of their partner brought. The clarity about what was really important in life, the clarity about what actually mattered. Now, thankfully, this person found my work uh, years previously and they've made a lot of progress, but in the end, all you can do is look back on time wasted. I've talked about this a lot myself when I talk about my own experience of retroactive jealousy, where I look back with regret on all the time I wasted frittering about nonsense, wasting my days away worried about things that had no point, served no purpose, all this worry, worrying about things that didn't matter. And this comment that I read from this person, this retroactive jealousy survivor who lost their partner to an illness, this is not the first such comment that I have received. I've received many emails uh, from retroactive jealousy survivors who ended up losing their partner. And without fail, every single one of these retroactive jealousy survivors who wrote to me spoke of the intense regret that they experienced after they lost their partner, when they realized all the time they wasted worrying about nonsense, all the times they lashed out at their partner because of something that happened five years, 10 years, 20 years ago, all of the love they rejected that their partner was offering them that they didn't accept because they were struggling with irrational retroactive jealousy. I can speak personally about this. Now, I haven't lost someone, uh, a partner or an ex-partner or anything like that, thankfully, but I have lost some people in my personal life. In fact, I've lost several people in the recent years who meant a lot to me, uh, including my mother. And I just wanna really put this message out there for anyone watching this because you know, we have an interesting relationship with death, with loss, with grief in much of the Western world. And I have spent the majority of my adult life living and working in Asia. And there's a much different relationship with death in Asia. For the most part, death is not something that's avoided. It's not a topic of conversation that people avoid. It's not something people try to clean up and pretty up and you know sweep it under the carpet. We don't wanna talk about that. That's being morbid, right? I'm sure you've heard this comment before. Why would you talk about death? That's being morbid. When in reality, the only thing we know for sure when we're born is that we're gonna die. That's it. And frankly, I consider death and my own death each and every day of my life. I've been doing this for a long time now, but when I lost my mother, all of a sudden this took on a new significance. This took on a new importance for me. It was more clear than it ever had been before. Because before my mother died, I talked a big game, right? I talked about Stoic philosophy and Buddhism and I'd spent years in India and all this stuff. And I felt like, yeah, I understand the reality of death. I understand how important it is to consider it every day. But when my mom died, it was like, okay, now I get it. I didn't get it before. I do now. Our time on this earth is limited. We are not going to be here forever. Every relationship ends, either because of a breakup or divorce, or because one of those parties passes away. There is a finite limit on the amount of time that we're gonna have on this planet. 
sharing it with beautiful people, sharing memories and making memories and sharing love and giving love, receiving love, having all the beautiful experiences associated with a long-term relationship or our relationship with our parents or our children, whatever the case may be, this party will come to an end. And I don't say that to depress you because frankly, when I consider my own death, it is the opposite of depressing. It's motivating, it's inspiring. It makes me wanna be a better man. It makes me wanna record better videos. It makes me wanna be a better coach. It makes me wanna write better books. It makes me wanna create better online courses and serve my community better because I know that my time to do this work, to have an impact in the world is limited. If I waste a day of my life, and believe me, I've wasted many days of my life in the past. If I waste a day of my life, that is a day that I'm never getting back, right? I can make all the money in the world. I can never get that day back. And that's it. That's all I know for sure about life. And thus I wanted to share this somewhat somber video, not to depress you, not to bring you down, but to inspire you to take action, whatever that means for you. If it means scheduling an appointment with a therapist, great. If it means reading my book or someone else's book, great. If it means connecting with me and working with me one-on-one, -on -one, great. The point is this nasty little bastard of an issue that we call retroactive jealousy will not go away on its own. And you do not want to wake up one day realizing that it's too late, that you threw away a perfectly beautiful relationship or you wasted days, weeks, or months, or years of that relationship worrying about nonsense, worrying about things that don't matter. Because I can tell you, as one who has experienced a fair amount of grief in my personal life over recent years, that nothing is as clarifying as the death of a loved one about what really mattered, about what was really important. There's nothing like it. And I don't want that for you. So the advice that I would offer you is to, in your own little way, consider death each and every day, just a little bit. And again, it's not depressing, it's motivating, it's inspiring. It makes you wanna really seize the day in so far as you're capable. I do this in my own little way every day. And by the way, of course you know, this isn't my idea. Stoic philosophers have been talking about this you know, for millennia. This is a very, very old idea, but it's so important. So I hope you take this video, I hope you take this advice, and I hope this motivates you to savor that glass of wine a little bit more, to savor your partner a little bit more. Remembering that our time is limited, there's nothing worse than looking back on wasted time. And you can build any kind of life, any kind of relationship you want. The point is to simply take ownership and take that first step. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for sticking through this message. I, I really felt like it was important to share and I've been putting it off for a long time, but I just, I can't put up sharing this message anymore. And if you benefited from this video in some way, or this video gave you something to think about, please let me know. By clicking the like button below, you can leave a comment with your thoughts. I'd also appreciate that. And also make sure you're subscribed to my channel to be notified of new videos moving forward. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for listening. And I'll talk to you again very soon.